Hello, welcome to Von Pod. I am Ke- I am Maximum Kevin, and today we have a monster show for you. Of course, we have Maximum Bob from the Deli Creeps, and what you just saw the Stockyard Skinners. Oh man, I've uh, I've been waiting I don't know thirty years to talk to this guy, and uh, I want to tell you a little story before we bring him on. And let me get the right slide up for that. Back when, oh, I don't know, I was like maybe 12 years old, 11, maybe, something around that time. Uh, my brother w- w- was in college. He's uh, older than me. Um, so he had some cool friends there that were into some weird music. And one, you know, he would borrow CDs and bring them home and we'd listen to them. And one of the albums he brought, home was this one Tr- paraxis transmutation and it was just one of the most incredible weirdest things i've ever heard and it took me down a rabbit hole and wouldn't you know you know this was the same time i was getting into green jelly and guar and haunted garage and all the things that i'm still super into right now and oh boy oh i'm in trouble already Here's my brother, Evil Katie Keith, older, not old. Did I say old? He's, you're older, yes. Um, does anyone remember in AOL Instant Messenger? And if you're in the comments, comment, tell me you're here. You know, we'll answer your questions throughout the show and uh, show your comments. And, but if does anyone remember AOL Instant Messenger? Because I was about... Yeah, it was around that time. You know, I was um, just becoming a teenager or maybe a little bit less. And my screen name that I picked was Deli Creeps because at the time they were my favorite band. And this was in what, 1995 or 96 when they were still a current band. And I got to show you this because how many kids do you know? dressed up as Buckethead for Halloween. Back in 1996, it was really weird to go to a KFC and ask for an empty bucket. They didn't get it yet. Now I'm sure they get it all the time. But if you can see this face I'm holding, oh, let me put that full screen again. In the corner, you'll see a sticker too. And I actually have that right here with me. I don't think this face works anymore. But there it is, an original, really, really shiny Deli Creep sticker. So you get it. I've been doing, I've been into this for a long time. So let's just get straight to it. Let's bring the man on. It's Maximum Bob. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going over there? It's what, going what, did good. We just, what did we just see? Oh my God, my bass just fell. See, that's why that shit doesn't work anymore. 
too that many sticker is, hanging around. I haven't seen one of those stickers in in a long time. I actually had a couple left. Oh yeah. And I think my one of my I think my kid put one up somewhere and but yeah, that's that's pretty rad to see those. I oh seen man, they were so cool. They're so shiny. Like it's like a mirror. Yeah, well, it's supposed to look like a blade, right? So it's like a knife with oh. blood on it. So, I don't yeah. know. I, I think I cut it up, but... Well, yeah, it's called good. That's yeah, it's the old man. school logo. Who wrote those letters? Oh, God. I, I, man, I think it was a friend of ours. I think Scoop did it. Scoop? Oh, yeah, man, you guys uh, have the craziest yeah, names. To, you know what? I have to find the answer to that because I think it was him, but I want to double check and... I'll uh, I'll put it out there into the world because yeah that's a, such a cool logo it's just it is. it's so creepy I mean I think that's what you were going for right yeah and then the the same you know with the exploding man guy with the bowl and all that, that it was all from yeah the that I got my old school deli creep shirts up here this one's legit from the nineties I yeah, mean I think one. they're all legit from the nineties but I got this one in the nineties that's bad. but we're talking about this guy right the bowl yeah yeah who did that one it's I think it was the same. Same so, guy, man. You know, it's honestly, I, I would show up, you know, whatever practice, and there would be new stuff, and I'd just be like, oh, all right, yeah. But all I was right. always like, I don't want to say I was out of my mind, but you know, I was so that it was just like, yeah. And I mean, I think that we were, we're, I mean, you know, referring to Buckethead, we we're both similar in that way. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, just you know, let other people who are really good at what they do, like, do it sure take, take care of that and you don't think about that you know right so yeah and if they want to do it why not let them do it yeah yeah i mean why not i'm not i'm not that artistic not not like that so right right yeah you stick to the words man yeah <laughs> so i just noticed on my camera that so you can see gear but then a toaster oven because you know every little <laughs> video needs a toaster oven because you just never know when you got a slip you know put something in there to get it hot that's the kind of studio maximum bob has yeah i would expect no less from you so what what have what have you cooked in that thing in the studio oh i like toast man i'm a fan of toast just yeah. plain simple toast butter yeah, or... yeah, mostly i don't eat a lot of you know i just like sort of uh sustenance you know mm -hmm. um, obviously i mean i eat when i go places and all that but right right when i'm here i don't really think about food that much so yeah, no, I would never have noticed that if you didn't point it out. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. I've never seen a toaster oven in a studio, but hey, it makes sense no. if you spend a lot of time there. You can use, you know, it can do really good distortion with it, I guess. Put something Ooh. in it and it gets distorted. Yeah, man. Try putting a mic and some effects up to that thing. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm sure someone, some creative guy, someone out there can learn how to wire that up into a microphone cord or something. Yeah. There you I, go. I don't know. The, um, I don't know. It's just having the smell of toast is nice. So, have you have you written any songs about toast. toast? Yeah, toast is you know it's just a comforting sort of you know it's all good. Flaky. So what did what Go did we it. see in the beginning there? Uh, that was your band's Duckyard Skinners. How's the yeah, Skinners that, doing? We well, so I've been like transitioning. Um, I don't know, man. I started recording vocals. And then, you know, decided that I wanted it to sound better. And then, you know, I think I understand now how, how home studios become, you know, like how some people get it to the point where they have to do it, like for reals, because mm -hmm. you can hear it. And, you know, having worked in other professional studios, it's like once you've heard it, you know when you're hearing it and when you're not hearing it. You know? So is it the, the quality, not, not yeah. as much the performance? Yeah, well, and then I don't want to think about the... I mean, I, I, like, I don't know, there's something about the rawness of being in, in my own environment that um, is, I, I, I used to love going into, like, say, Travis's. You know, yeah, Travis, Travis Dickerson, you know, yeah, yeah. Because I, I could perform for people. Like, if, if Bucket and the other people, or even with Stockyard Skinners, we went there, mm -hmm. if you know there's other people in the room, then you can kind of, it's kind of putting on a show. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily always like the, performance technically speaking you know energy wise things like that fluctuate a lot so i love having the ability to to wait until you're at that right mm -hmm. that right level and then you know so recording on my own got to the point where i started to get really good results and i'm like you know i mean look if you if you that's can the stuff that's on band 
for weeks, then great. But yeah, yeah. Who plus, can? <laughs> yeah, and also when when the the inspiration hits, you know, because I think there's something about when Bucket and I were together, it was mm -hmm. always it was always fire, right? So mm -hmm. it's just like like we, it, you know, it just you would always off, your energy is bounced off each other right. like crazy. It was yeah, crazy. It was, I yeah. mean, that's why the Deli Creeps is like one of my favorite bands of all time because they're just it's just so unique the energy that you create together yeah it's it um i don't know <sighs> so <laughs> so, so what's happening now with the skinners <laughs> well the skinners so i we have these songs we have like a few songs that are you know have been on the verge of being done and then some of them are still kind of being scrapped together and um you know man we were really really making a lot of progress and then COVID hit and you yeah, know yeah yeah that that song is the yeah same you played the whiskey everybody. right huh you played the whiskey right yeah yeah and and the live was really starting to come together but mm -hmm. so was just you know getting together for rehearsals and having productivity you know it was really rolling there for a minute but we um i don't know it's just harder it's well and plus I've gone through, you know, some personal changes and upheaval with, mm -hmm. with my personal life that made it hard to focus on, on music. Sure. Sure. Um, so, and those songs will still happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there may be other things happening in the world. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get to that later. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, but, it's been fun, you know, like those guys are. Yeah, I was just glad you kind of kept the, the spirit of the Deli Creeps alive in some way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because the world was missing that. There was, a, there was a hole that needed to be filled. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think I try to take it with a little, you know, tongue in cheek. and. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to, right? But by the same token, I let out, like the world does make me kind of crazy. The world does make me angry or sad or you know all the things that it's got going on especially nowadays mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i need i like i always needed that release that mm -hmm. you know to take my focus because i you know it's really funny when i was really young i just i remember thinking to myself i don't ever want to go to prison yeah you know? and then <laughs> how's so that gone that. i really did i thought like i could focus my anger or my whatever um, doing stupid things that will get you thrown in jail or or maybe let's just sing about cows yeah so i went with the sing about cows so yeah yeah, yeah. speaking of uh <laughs> you, you as a younger man who is this guy right here oh man i don't know i think i ate him yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that how, was how was far back my, is uh, this my, am i being a, oh that's at a restaurant yeah that's right I think I was Back looking at a like, restaurant. Wow. No way. What's going on? Yeah, I yeah. don't know, man. I was that sweater though. I kind of wish I had it. Oh yeah, that would still be... have it. Yeah. <laughs> so, let that guy turned into. Ma Where did you get the name Maximum Bob? When did that start? Well, when we first started, I was Deli farmer. Creeps? Farmer, yeah. Well, it was yeah when we were. Heck, I think we were screwing around before we even had a name. And yeah, I mean, I heard you. Tell me this is true. You went to high school with uh, Bucket. Yeah. So you don't know each other for a long, long time. Yeah. And we. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so. I was into punk my whole. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. Go, let's talk about punk rock. Yeah. And so I wasn't I wasn't really into guitar music per se. I was into music that featured guitar. Sure. sure. And then I kind of um, I think the first thing that shifted me from punk to metal was uh except i heard okay know, except and i so was like, like Man, he's stuff, huh? this, this was before kill them all you know and then and then when i heard that stuff it was like whoa this shit's pretty crazy and so it kind of it that was really when i was like okay guitar is in my in my realm of like did, okay, did bucket turn you on to them the, or huh did bucket turn you on to them uh no no you know when I met him, he was, he, it was kind of right before Ingve happened. So it was, mm -hmm. um, at, when I first knew him, he was, he had been like on a steady diet of just 
80s metal and kind of taking apart like he had this just sort of way about taking things apart you know like he didn't i wouldn't say necessarily like he was someone who was just listening to music you know laying there and enjoying it as much as analyzing it and then figuring out how to do it you know mm, and mm-hmm. so i mean i watched him so i knew him when he was a junior in high school wow and by the time he was let's say 19 that two years dude you know i mean he he yeah. his uh, level of improvement and his his practice his, his you know epic. His regimen and, yeah. and hard work was unbelievable like it was I mean, we would we would watch movies mm-hmm. for the whole day. Like, I would go over there on a Saturday, and we would hang out and watch movies the whole day. But the horror whole movies, time, all kinds of crazy movies. He now it's funny because I might have turned him on to more weird stuff in the beginning, but then he turned the he turned the tables with movies. Man, yeah. I would come over there and he'd be like, "Dude, you got to see this," you know, and he'd put on this just you know really nut stuff. Um, some pretty underground things, you know. And yeah, I mean, it was whoa. harder to get movies back then, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh, commercial VHS sales had probably just started, like, around that yeah, time. Yeah, right? it was, yeah. This was pre-discs, yeah. Yeah, of course, definitely pre-discs. But, oh, I mean, yeah. before, like, when you could only get them at a rental store, right? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. We, we would do that. We would go to, we'd go hang out in a video store and, you know, pick up rentals. and, But then... The whole time like so let's say we we hung out at like three in the afternoon until 11 at night the entire time he was practicing yeah so he would he could watch a movie and he totally was into the movie and he was just doing his his right. record like it was always on his acoustic his ovation and so <laughs> his if you I, I don't know, man this is going off on a tangent but yeah go I, off I, on a tangent man. modern speed players on on in the internet yeah and i see how they play i watch how they they don't dig like they don't they all just sort of float on top of the string a lot you know and their action is so so responsive as far as how much fret you actually got to get into to get a sound Mm -hmm. and so they just they kind of play like butter which is cool whatever works for you that's all good i'm not judging it but if you are next to him when he plays you hear the red you hear this the percussiveness he's he's mm. so oh yeah completely yeah. just eating you know really beat beaten into it and that all came from the ovation the ovation had i wouldn't say horrible but it had really high action it wasn't mm-hmm. very that'll that'll fuck your fingers up oh dude yeah. and he would just, <laughs> look i remember one time he didn't stop his his thing because he just had this certain program basically that he did mm-hmm. he didn't stop like a whole movie bro and i'm just like dude <laughs> what the f- you know it was like wow man the only thing i could give that kind of attention to was personal pleasure and yeah yeah <laughs> at that point that wasn't going to be eight hours man yeah you know I mean? I'm joking. well i'm not joking but anyways it was just <laughs> like that's what gave him his strength and even now dude at his oh. age his hands yeah. are still just and by the way i don't know how old he is because he doesn't have an age but right of course his strength is but, I, but i've seen his white hair recently so Oh, is that right? Uh, I'm, yeah, he posted a video of him uh, practicing with some white hair hanging a down. Bit, yeah. Yeah. So well, I'm I'm hoping that's the new image because that would be that would be rad to me. I got. He's, yeah, he's got entering wizard of... phase. Dude. Well, <laughs> I'll find out. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my anyway. brother's asking uh, his his improvement. Was that had anything to do with Paul Gilbert, or was that afterwards? That yeah, I mean after he he was kind of at the tail end of the Ingve phase. And then that I, that was when he started taking, you know, lessons with Paul. And yeah, I think he only took a few. It wasn't like yeah, he took a few. But then we saw Ray Rex, uh, I think, fourteen times. Mm-hmm. So we went to every show that was a, a even. I even went to San Francisco to see them play. We kind of like I, he didn't go on that trip, but mm-hmm. anyways, the point is, is we were all around them a lot, and he was there Just was smoking it up, that, right? Yeah, well, he he took what he needed. Like he, and the thing is, is uh, you know, I'd be I would be divulging that this conversation. I won't give a date for the conversation, <laughs> but the last time we talked about that subject, um, I just liked how he he was like, we take 
what he needed technically from someone who would learn how to do it and, and in, incorporate the ability yeah. to do it. But then he didn't make himself sound like them. Like he didn't. Yeah. He always well, had I a distinct style. In, yeah. I mean, you can hear some influences. Everybody has that, but not, mm -hmm. not to the extent that if you knew how much he, he kind of ate things like, I hate to say it like that, but it's like, he just devoured it like a, you know, like yeah. a hive mind kind of thing and just took it all in. But then he still created his own sound. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think a lot of it had to do with um, the Slominski book because okay. he, he just, he, he kind of thought of things as, as patterns and, and then how well, he's a robot. These, I think so. Yeah. yeah and that then, makes uh, um, Scriabin and, you know, uh, the soundtrack to The Shining, man. You know, oh, like, because that yeah. just that opened ha up. Haunted Garage used to play that. Yeah, well, and so then we, I would get things, and this is pretty hilarious. Yeah. I had this Casio keyboard, and it recorded, right? Okay. It would record Pat, and so, but then you could play it back at speed. Right, and I yeah, didn't know yeah. shit about piano, but I knew I was very good at patterns, and I could play these really crazy patterns. I would play them kind of fast, but not too fast. And then I would hit the thing, and I would play it back, like at this ridiculous speed. Mm. And at first, he'd be like, whoa. And then later, he'd be like, wait, 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 play that again. And then I swear to you, dude, and within an hour, it's like he was doing this crazy-ass pattern. I'm like, fuck. And he was – it was just like he was this – uh this, you know, I don't know, man. It was like a program, and you just poured in the data, and he just, you know. Yeah, but, but he, he was, has a talent for it, for sure. Yeah, and, and and that's not news to anybody, but I think yeah, having sat at it, like, at the table next to him and really watching it occur, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You know, we yeah. we had a really good friendship, and uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> It's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, just, I don't know. Kind of bring the, up, I want to go back to your, your punk roots. Um, what kind of punk were you into? And did you see any of the original groups? Like, well, were you going to shows? We went to shows. Did you? All the West Coast, like everything. Anybody who was here. I saw the Circle Jerks last week. I know. I, I wanted to go see the Circle Jerks, but they were playing when they were here. They played on the, well, I mean, they're here. They live here, but. Yeah, yeah. They played the same night as Mastodon, and I already got ah. tickets. So, yeah. What are you gonna but, do? Uh, um, my everything, dude. We saw Black Flag. Put it this way: one of my descendants. favorite memories is sitting on the ground next to Henry after he just done a set, and we we're it was it was a show that they played on a, a basically a warehouse dock in L.A. It was out. It was out overlooking where L.A. River is. You know, which is not a river; it's very industrial. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that was just our life, man. We went to shows. No, there was no rock starness to to punk. It oh yeah, that. no, it was a great equalizer, really. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I saw no, I saw Circle Jerks two weeks ago, and then I saw X Lex last week. So I'm I'm <laughs> checking off my L.A. punk royalty man. list. Dude, my daughter called me one night. She was like what, 15, 16, whatever it was. And she was in a, a restaurant with her uh, friend's parents. And she goes, she, she says, Dad, I'm sitting with someone. And I'm, I, th I think you know who, who she is. And I just want, she wants to say hi to you. And I said, okay. And it was Exine Cervenka. Oh, wow. And I'm yeah. like, uh, you don't know who that is, honey, do you? And she's like, no, I guess they're, they're like some cool punk band. I'm all, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah they're cool. still out there doing it, man. It's yeah, impressive. Man. I, I really zoom, I and mean, that guy's great. Oh, dude, I can't really think of anything substantial. Of course, we didn't see the Sex Pistols. That was. Did you see the Misfits? Yeah. Oh uh, man, that's great. Um, I mean, everybody else, man. Black Flag, Circle Jerks, Bad Religion. You know, I mean, it, the, the list is endless. Dirty Rotten Imbeciles, DRI stayed yeah. at my house. Oh wow! And they recorded their sec second LP. Yeah. They recorded it at toxic shock in Pomona. And, and so two of them stayed at my house. Cause of course those guys were poor and broke and they yeah, didn't have anything to eat. So yeah. I mean, they, black flag lived in like the basement of a church, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. 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 So this is a, Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Early bug. De 
definitely Van Halen, Randy Rhodes. He was really into Randy Rhodes. You know, he, um, that, yeah, you can hear that. Yeah, he loved oh, it. So that I want to talk about, uh, one of my, I think this is the slide. Yes. You wrote, was this was a pre a song you wrote before the Deli Creeps really formed? No. No. no, I wrote it, I actually wrote that at his house. Okay. Yeah, I was sitting out in the TV room. This is this is probably my favorite Daily Creep song. And it's like such a weird one to pick because it's not doesn't have all the crazy parts in it. It's just like no, it a doesn't. really great, very kind of Eddie Van Halen style pop rock song. It's just you know pure. we had a conversation, we were laughing about we should do this song that's like a like a rock love song. And um and he, you know, we both were laughing about it. Yeah, let's do it. And so he wrote it, and I wrote the lyrics. And you know, it's really weird you bring that up because uh, last week I went to Las Vegas with my son. My son has been fairly instrumental. Dude, you saw in the... David Copperfield. Ah, I wish. No, oh, that was just a sign. Yeah, I oh, wish. Oh, you it went to the show. The, it was where we were at. But Fuck, um, I would love to see David Copperfield. He had never heard Shadows. Ooh. And um and he asked what? me, I don't know how he, he asked about it or something like, what is that song Shadows? And I go, oh, yeah, it's one of our songs. And he hadn't heard it, so he looked it up on YouTube and he found the, the demo version. Yeah. He was tripping out, man. He was like, it's this song is a so good. good. Song. Actually, and, let uh, me play it in the background while we're talking. Uh, I just laughed. I'm like, yeah, I mean, the, the um solo structure, everything was just so. It's perfect. Classical. It's a perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, rock, you know, classic rock. Like this. I'll turn it down low. We can talk over it. So, um, if something were happening. Yes, if if you had ever a chance to do some more Deli Creeps recordings in the future. Yeah, that song. Please put work. this on the list, because that's like shadow, something yeah. I need to hear before I die is a, a studio version of yeah. the song. Me too. I mean, I Great. listen to the old version and I'm like, Who's that kid singing? You know, because my voice is definitely, you know, filled out and all that. But sure. um, I have been, I don't want to say practicing it, but I've been practicing it. And um, I think I can do it justice. So there you go. I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, you might, you sound more mature. Yeah. But um, I, 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 I dug that song. It was so fun. What I yeah, you uh, know, I just had to, I gotta rock out a little bit. It's so hooky, you know? It's such a good song. Like, this could be a hit in any era. Yeah, So let, let's make this song a hit. I'll, I'll be, I mean, I'm, be, I'm being honest when I say this. When he played it, we were in our car driving, and when he played it, I haven't heard the song, I mean, honestly, in over 10 years. Is that not one uh, the, the Skinners did? You didn't know that song? No, and I just, I don't have it around me. I used to have some recordings of it but i i never even i mean i have known that stuff is on youtube yeah. but i just haven't ever listened to it and and i'm like damn man i forgot this is a pretty good song you know it's like dude it's a great song catchy. it's you know so anyways and i mm. i know that uh, people love his playing and the whole that that part of it so okay so maybe there's a gift on the horizon maybe know? maybe we're yeah. just gonna tease you we can't say anything I can't, but, uh, I can't, but we're just putting it out into the world that we would love to see that. I would, yeah. I'm Definitely. speaking for my spell, myself, especially because, well, let me talk about this. Um, so let me, well, let me show you guys. This is the original Deli Creeps, right? Yeah. For the um, most part. We had some part, other bass yeah. players, but that was yeah. the first main. Yeah. You had a problem with bass players. I wish I was on your coast so I could just be your fucking bass player already. <laughs> I'm I'm no virtuoso buckethead, you know, but I, I'm a professional, you know, level yeah, yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Um, bass players have always been the the. And actually, I may have an announcement later in the show for you guys, uh, so stick around. Right on. Um, even my closest followers, I don't think, even know this one. So, um, yeah. Uh, how? So, okay. I'm, like I said, I'm making a documentary about haunted garage and like this whole world of like shock rock performance art like late 80s early 90s and you guys are right in the pocket there right as you know at the time when i got into you 
Dela Creeps was still an active project. It yeah. was probably around like the 96 era. And and tell me if I'm wrong, but the way I perceived it back then was Buckethead may go off and do his solo stuff and be on all these other albums, but Dela Creeps was like his home base. And I always expected that to be just like always going to be there. That's that's where Buckethead's, you know, that's where the coop is or whatever, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Was it like that? And and what what happened? <laughs> you know, did he just get too famous too quickly? Like, uh, I mean, I mean, it's so weird to think about now. But only a few years after this, he was in Guns and Roses. It's like I know. that's that's quite an elevation. Yeah, actually, I was um, I had dinner with him in L.A. when he basically found out like that he was going to yeah, be because you guys were kind of still Guns doing shows around that time too yeah and we were we were still talking you know more that that in that time um yeah we mm -hmm. had some good shows actually we had a couple of good shows in 96 but yeah. um and, you know between well even the coma era you guys were coming out and doing some deli creep stuff yeah right? yeah yeah and so my daughter was born in 97 so like once you know i started really focusing on you know the family life thing and and i think it just got a little more difficult um we have the kind of friendship that is like a forest fire right like, yeah. like when we talk we talk for two hours on the phone and then right we'll, and then, then if we hang out we're hanging out like around the clock doing stuff you know especially when we're still working on music yeah um so it's it's hard because like i would have to be super present to it and and in some ways i couldn't be the same person i was before mm -hmm. and so i i think it like in other words there's no hard feelings i think that i be i mean I'm, I'm not gonna lie and say i didn't miss it and that you know that i i wished the, kind of his life and your life kind of at the same time were kind of different you know going yeah. different directions yeah but let's just say hypothetically we were talking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still the same man it's like yeah. it's still like i wouldn't have had to see him yesterday or 10 years ago or 20 years ago it doesn't matter it's always the same like well he's ageless so I, I'm, I'm guessing the relationship is ageless as well right and i don't you know what's really weird is um let's say that there was an opportunity to do things um mm -hmm. Like, like, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be a fool and say, oh, I have an age and I have, you know, I'm not as spry mm -hmm. and all that shit. Right. But yeah, yeah. But I feel like I see a lot of bands who are from our same um, era that a, if they're even doing new, new material at all, you know, only a few of them are really still cutting. I got to say the new Guar album might be the best Guar album yet. Is it? See, yeah that's cool that you know but how many bands are really doing that and not many and, not many and mostly nostalgia that, stuff if uh if anything yeah like x think, you know like their new album i don't think it's pales in comparison to los angeles you know what i mean oh yeah yeah but and, and i don't i don't expect anybody to be the same you know like right, that's right. but i guess what i'm trying to say is i feel like i'm like a horse in the freaking the starting gate like still because i i still have all this energy that I, I would be able to summon mm -hmm. doesn't matter how old I am. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I would have to be careful not to, you know, yes, please drop dead on stage. Yes, don't don't crazy. do that. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, man, given the opportunity, it's still going to be gnarly. And also knowing who we both are, there will be new music and it's not going to suck. Right. Will, so, will there be hypothetically, do you think you would write some new songs? Or you got so many? You get? You Absolutely. still like got a lot of ideas in your head for, for yeah? Songs? It's almost like there's already ideas being discussed, you know, because it's just it's um, you know it's like Spidey sense, right? Yeah, it's in the like, collective consciousness. It's right, right. It's easy, and it honestly, right. I'm not make it is. It does come that way. It's like, um, you know, yeah. the hand. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say that uh, I've heard you talk about the hand. Uh, where's my prop? Here's my prop. Yeah. So uh, that I didn't was have anything. Like, yeah, tell us the story. We walked in there 
we were at Serge's house, his studio at his house. And, um, you know, I had heard the song. I knew, I knew kind of like, okay, there's something there. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find but it. But it was I before the opera was. stuff got added in, right? Huh? It was before like the opera stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, in. there was nothing. Yeah. So we go in there and we were sitting in the control room and there was a, a magazine and on the magazine, there was a picture of a guillotine. And I don't know, I can't even remember what the, the sort of the frame, the, the, whatever the point of view was of that. But I said, man, look at that. Wouldn't it be funny to do a song about you chopping off your hand and then trying to, trying to catch it and use it again? And that <laughs> it's was like it. E very Evil Dead too. Yeah, well, that, that was all it was. And then I just went into the thing and, and then I, we only did two takes. We did two takes. So everything you hear on that song was done in one of one no, of the two takes. That's Paraxis, Keith. Yeah, we'll get and to that, that one. You know, um, it uh, it just, yeah, I, it just I comes just out of you. coming out, and the guy who was engineering and Serge were sitting there, and the, and Serge was just shaking his head like, like that was crazy, and um, and the the guy asked, "So how long have you guys been working on this?" <laughs> and I said, "What do you mean?" Like that was right now. Was it? <laughs> he was like, "What? How do you guys do this all the time?" And I'm like, "In a way, like some of it. Yeah, it's not all improv, but a lot." So, well, that's a nice picture. Yeah, uh, I was gonna ask who who took these photos. Do you remember? Uh, that was I think that was Chris Jones. I think Chris took those. He um, we were at this house that was abandoned, like broken down, and is that the um, same thing? That was in San Francisco. Okay. And now I got a couple different things. Oh, is this one? No. That's my backyard. My That's your crazy, backyard. My crazy house. Uh, all right. Well, let's go back to this one. I like this one. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. So there was just this piece of plywood sitting there with a hole in it, and we just stood behind it. It's great. Pinch looks like a kid, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that Pinch face there? Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's a, yeah, I love this photo. This is what I used for the flyer. But I, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I, I yeah. like to give proper yeah. credit where it's due, and you know, so I wanted to ask about that. Yeah, that was Jones, and those were taken some classic like Deli creeps. The manager of Mr. Bungle and other oh yeah projects. Well, let's uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's jump right there. Let me see. What do I got in my? Uh... Here we go. Nice. When did when did you first meet Mr. Bungle? Um, they we so I think uh, Bucket had sent a tape to Christine Yee. Yeah, yeah, right. And this was she had it for like she was a month. the she was their manager, right? Right, and, she and, and she's like, Brain's uh, cousin. Yeah, yeah, and so they were all listening to it, and they were I guess they were freaking out, like like yeah. Again. And so then um, she said that she would set up some shows for us so we just went up there and i mean those guys were uh i don't know i i hung out with the band more than anybody else in our band yeah just because like i had more time to kind of screw around mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they were great guys like it was it was so much fun i um, saw them do their thrash metal set uh right before the pandemic yeah yeah with their original stuff with yeah, uh, was, Scott Ian from Anthrax and uh, know, Dave Lombardo playing that. drums. Yeah, I was I was actually pretty close with um, the drummer Danny, mm -hmm. and um, we we did you know we did a lot of stuff. It was just fun. They were all really cool guys, though. Do you remember this review that uh, Mike Patton wrote about you guys? Yeah, we this is the best thing I've ever read. Yeah, we were tripping. It's like okay, and yeah, then, you know it's cool because I liked Faith No More, but. Yeah when really who mike was was the bungle you know who oh he was yeah yeah in mr bungle and so it was kind of weird because it's like i remember i came home um from up there i came down to to visit and dude he was like all over tv you know because faith and yeah blown they just up. blew up yeah, yeah then, uh, the have... real the epic video was just like huge oh man it was but... everywhere and, and i didn't have a tv to watch that kind of stuff on it and you know when you're in a band and things are really you're really focusing on your thing, right? I, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of time for other, that's why like 
that period of time when people ask me about movies or other bands, I'm like, man, I really didn't, unless we played with a band, I, I didn't listen to a lot of other music. You know, one of the only bands that broke through to us me and for book and and I was Pantera mm. and only he wasn't into them. You know, it was more like just cause the sound was so heavy. And yeah. I mean, far. it was revolutionary at the yeah, time. And he was a huge dime bag. You know, he was blown away by some of the riffs and I, um, the killer. Yeah. Oh dude. It was, I worked, I worked on the hell yeah. DVD. <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah. 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 I mean, My, it, I used to work for their management. <laughs> It, it blew. So I, I talked to uh, Vinnie Paul on the phone once. Whoa! I mean, well, I was I was on a phone conference with Vinnie Paul. I don't think I said anything, and I think he was really wasted. So nice, it, you know. It had to be that how, time of day. How do you feel about the Pantera reunion? Reunion. Uh, and I, don't, I mean, you know, people will say like, "Well, you know, shouldn't somebody be able to play their song yeah you can like it's called a cover band or or yeah, yeah. a tribute band or but taking the name without those two guys uh, it's a little weird oh, right dude i wouldn't yeah, do I'm the not... jelly creeps without buckethead right you know? that's and why I mean, it's stockyard skinners yeah. yeah like that's that's nuts and but you know hey let's be real it's money yeah you know the music industry ain't so... what it used to be right no and nobody's making the kind of money that they did pre-covid and you know and music yeah. in and of itself is really hurting yeah definitely yeah yeah Post yeah it was glam. did bucket have a uh, uh, what was that album called power metal i think oh man <laughs> no some of that oh so it's not going to be called pantera okay I, did, I thought it was really that's that's better that, that i can better. accept that and i still would love to see zach i mean why not you know that's, yeah sure i've like, seen him play with ozzy Rift. Why not? But yeah. Uh, let's go back to this. So, how did this happen? <laughs> just hanging out, like just hanging uh, out. And what? You're just like kind of in the in the segues. Or are you on any the actual songs? Oh yeah, yeah. I do backup vocals on a few. I think three songs. Um, it's funny because we listen to this, my son and I, and and it <laughs> sometimes it hits me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. I, he knows my sound. It's funny. He's like, Dad, I gotta I listen back you. to it because I mean, it's so. Patton can do so many crazy vocals. It's hard to tell, you know. Yeah, I think when it sounds like a a bear, it's okay. Yeah, like then there's a a couple that are more noticeable than others. Yeah, yeah. I think I say over and over and over and over and over a bunch of times on one okay. of them. But whatever, it was just fun. It was a lot of fun. It wasn't like a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And, and you got to work with John Zorn. That's cool. You know what? He was really nice, man. He um, he took everybody to eat. You know, it was like, because, you know, we were all not, it wasn't like we were rich or anything. So Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was pretty rad. He was he was a trip. And he yeah, um, he had some really cool ideas about, about panning and stuff with guitar. I don't know. If you listen to that record, even now, it still sounds so fucking big oh, guitar-wise. Yeah. You know, it's a good, it's a pretty big sound for... Not having yeah, been a super kind of timeless, distorted. yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, well, all their records, really. Oh, I mean, they only have three or four, but they're all pretty timeless. Yeah, they are. I want to talk to you a little bit about the original Daily Creeps demos. Who recorded these? Like, what do you? What do you remember about that? One of them, we. Uh... God, I wish I knew the name of the place. It was, was that, yeah, I've never seen any credit. I'm I'm Mr. Liner Notes. I call myself that. I like to know like all the details, and it I've was, never known any details about these. It was down in um this one. I mean, we did this place down in Orange County, mm -hmm. and uh, man, they were tripping out when we. I mean, when we start, we got going on random killing, mm -hmm. and, you know, making some of the sound effects and stuff. They yeah. were they were tripping. They were. I wouldn't say they were worried. But, <laughs> kind of got that vibe of like what the hell's wrong with these guys yeah you know because really i mean you okay you name some stuff but from our point of view like i've said this before people would come up to me and say so how long have you been listening to this band or this band and i'm like i, I like they they wouldn't ask me about people that i'd never even heard before and honestly mm. you know or how oh how much did you listen to zappa i'm all i've heard about three songs at that point in my life that was the truth you know and um you know, it was just like, 
I listened to punk, man. Before that, yeah. I went to the Beatles and the Eagles and yeah. and Queen. And, you know, like, I went from what's classic rock of the 70s to punk to us. Like, I, it was not – um. anyway, so when we <laughs> – we just kind of rolled, man. So, like, does anyone have these master tapes? Is there any way to have it officially remixed or remastered one day? I don't know. or? If who has if this shit? Does, it would be you know, Pinch would know about it, or um, man, because I would like to hear it, you know, yeah, especially on the master level, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a, it's a little rough. I mean, the the performance is there, but the quality wasn't quite there, man. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> like, even in Shadows, as much as I, I was, oh, it's not a good quality the song. song. But the like the freaking so room sound was so echoey and um, it's hilarious. I don't know, man. I'm so you know that's the other thing about recording nowadays is I really love a nice upfront presence, like not not too hot, but I like it. Oh yeah, that was like, a very '80s sounding. Oh sound man! Mix. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but that back then you didn't really know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'm sure. And when you're that young and you're just like, I'm in a recording studio, this is great, you know. Oh, yeah, it was fun. And it, everything we did, man, was always just about having fun. It wasn't even like, I mean, I never would have thought anyone would hear some of those songs and whatever, you know, we just did it for us. You know what? I, I, I want to show everybody what kind of fun that you guys had. And I want to play one of my favorite Deli Creeps clips. Okay. Let's see. I think this is it. <laughs> I mean, this is just everything about the deli creeps all rolled into one right here. That's <laughs> so gone, man. Yeah, and Pinch is just like screaming and laughing in the background. I did get to see Bucket and Pinch play once together. That's cool. Yeah. Uh This is just, I'm, I'm guessing this is just complete improv. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he had said something about, hey, I should take this mask out, you know, and then play with it. Like, yeah, what, do something. And I don't even know, I don't remember even thinking that that's what I would do. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny, man. He was, uh, he's really good physically. So it just, oh, yeah. It always just added. That's I so was cool. all verbal and big and, you know, it was just a trip. Yeah. Let's, let's see some actually playing. Let's see. What clip can I show here? Let's try this one. Oh, no, that's not a clip. Let's try this one. Live editing. This is the this is the thing about it doing oh, a live right. show, <laughs> but then I don't have to worry about it later. It's all done. Oh, good, man. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. Oh no, I'm messing up here. Um, no I want to I want to show this while I'm finding it. This is one of my biggest regrets of my life. As you can see here, I just scanned this. Uh, I have an original Deli Creeps catalog. Yeah. <laughs> There's only two things in it. And I, you can see, I actually filled it out to get this tape for $5, but I was so young and so broke that I never actually sent it in. And though I Man. never got my Deli Creeps tape. Man, we got to make more of those just so people can have them. I know, right? I mean, people love like cassettes now. It's kind of back in yeah. style. Yeah. So might as well, right? That's rad. But that yeah, was... I, it's like one of my biggest regrets. I'm like, five fucking dollars, man. That, Back in this, 96, um, I guess. That would have all been... That's definitely Pinch's writing. Oh, as yeah? The, yeah, the P.O. Box and all that stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. I, here, I want to ask you. So this is a... This is a mystery song for me. I don't know what song this is. Maybe you can tell me. And and hypothetically, 
if you ever did some more stuff, you know, put this one on the list. Okay. <laughs> That's super badass. Well, those are song. Which song? No, the of Sean, the bass oh, player. No. What is this song? Damn, man. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, I do, but I'm trying to remember what we called it. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh. Man, this is a fucking type of item, isn't it? This is a banger. I love this. <laughs> I forgot about that. What's um, the name? It'll of hit me song? when I'm not when I stop thinking about it. Don't worry, I'll remember what it's called. Okay. Well, here I think uh, I think this is another one that was kind of lost to time, and it's not time. Although I love that. Tomorrow. Part. Stealing tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. This one never got recorded either. So no, we have later on it. Sometimes it's listed as "We Aren't the World." Okay. But yeah, this is. Wow, I don't know if I've heard this version or this. Oh well, I have this whole show from my tape trading days. If I can send it to you, if you want. Yeah, we're gonna. <clears throat> Sorry. If if you were if, to. Theoretically, this song is probably gonna be on the list. Uh, Nice. Um, and all right, I got I got one more request, hypothetically. If you were to go back, oops, I really would love a proper Deli Creeps version of this. Because <laughs> this is another one of my favorites. It's just like a great rock song, and of course, it's just a tragedy yeah. that it. You know, he did it for this instrumentally. Well, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. But it's like, oh my god, this is a Deli Creep song. Yeah, I, I um, In theory, it's definitely on the list. Taster's Choice? Yeah, is that right, Bell? Yes, he's right. That's it. Wow. That's, so we got, yeah, we got some it. knowledge in the room. I knew, I, I remembered it was a play on, on like, a, anyways, that was a brand name. It was yeah. a coffee reference. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, Damn, oh, yeah, so. It. Yeah, he's right. That's it. That's great. Um, let's go back to the bungle stuff. This is a show you guys played with Trey filling in? Yeah. Yeah. How my, was that? My, uh, Tony had to leave town, and we'd already had these two shows booked, so it actually went really well so it was it was a trip i mean yeah he's a natural musician he's oh man the guy's incredible super good i'm i'm stoked for all the shit he's doing you know yeah yeah okay so this leads me here's another mr bungle but uh somewhere right. on here there's a deli creep so yeah here's a, it's with mr bungle yeah but this is leading into another question i had i heard and i can't find any flyers though but you guys played a couple shows with guar yeah we Tell me about the Crest, that. The Crest what? Theater in um, in uh, Sacramento it was huge, man. And what, uh, would you remember what like what year this was? Probably uh, like ninety one or something. Probably no. I think it's when we get came back after the ninety six stuff. No, it was before that. So it was okay, probably I'd say ninety two, ninety in there. Okay. 
Oh yeah, they were playing pretty big shows at that point. Yeah, that well, that was a that was a good show. Oh, two of them, they and were a really cool guys. Did you know about them, or were you like blown away, and vice versa? Did they? I did. Did they have a reaction to you guys? Yeah, they were cool, but the, you know, it's it's funny, and I totally get this that they they have to do so much. Oh yeah, and there's so much backstage prep and like. They don't really have time to fuck around. Yeah, they don't, you know, they're so focused on what they have to do. And, and I totally appreciate that. Oh, yeah. You know? they, and still, to this day, like, they put out in so, to, too much work for their own good, honestly. Oh, man. But honestly, after the show was over backstage, they were super good, cool guys, like, really cool. And they did, you know, they did say things, you know. It was, it was rad. Because at the time, like, I would put you guys in the same realm, like, just... I'm obsessed with these weirdo bands from that era. And some yeah. of them, you know, at the same, at that time, they were all kind of at the, around the same level. Yeah. And then now it's just like, well, some of them never stopped, you know, and Guar still playing sold out shows everywhere. I, I have one of my favorite moments of, of ever on stage at that show in Sacramento, yeah. which was, um, you know, you got all these hardcore fans that aren't there to see the opener and they don't, they sure. don't like you. And, you know, get off the stage. We want to see Guar. Yeah. So there was this kind of group of people that were sort of close to the front. Oh, they were at the, the front row. And a couple of them kept like giving us the bird. Fuck you. Fuck you. And um, I I don't know how, but I looked I looked over and I noticed it looked like a, um, a gaffer or stage guys. They had um, silver metallic paint. They probably used it to mark floor marks and stuff yeah so anyways, i mean it's hard to see in those costumes i'm sure yeah yeah and so i don't you know i just looking around and i and i'm doing you know i'm in my thing i'm going crazy and i see this can and i pick it up and i just got right in front of those guys and i was just staring at them and like going nuts and i and i started spraying my crotch with it and i'm looking at them <laughs> and then i held it up and i sprayed it in my mouth and i just started spitting the paint out at them okay oh, dude two of them went from like fuck you to like yeah ah. and then they were the rest of the show was like they were so into it right it went from like here to here and i'm like right on man you know paint didn't taste that great they like yeah, I was yeah. following it. and i was just like but i was in my you know i was gone and um i remember getting off later and i'm like god what the fuck and then i'm like oh and I'm, uh. I'm like fuck it's paint oh man what did i do you know oh no it's not like i'm all there man when i'm up there it's oh yeah i know yeah. you definitely get lost in your character a bit yeah and and so but i remember that they're like yeah like right on man sold uh my brother wants to know which came first random killings came first yeah yeah yeah, yeah. again like oh my god that giant robot album was like half of a deli creeps record ready to go yeah Just, if you had branded it a little bit differently and got you up in there oh yeah. man it's all good though, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's beloved by all. At least the you know the tunes get out there. But um, oh, did you ever meet um, Bill Mosley? I'm sure you have, yeah. right? Yeah, at the show at the Knitting Factory that we did in Hollywood. Um, He's actually in my documentary. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He was totally nice, man. Yeah, he was really nice. He was sweet. Yeah, and um, it was rad because you know he's he's kind of. I don't know, like, like I know he's the there's the actor side of him, and he's very yeah. and he's professional, but he was really excited. Like he looked, you know, he was like a kid when he because he got to yeah. Come he doesn't get to go on stage very often. Like he's no, always behind was, the camera, right? And this was, I think, this was before all, you know, a lot of the things that he did. Yeah, this and was before was, the Rob Zombie movies, I think. So yeah, it, it, or it I mean, was, definitely it was after um, Chainsaw too, though for sure. He, um, he had already done um, one, or at least one of them. Oh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Probably. Yeah, that was a yeah. topic of conversation. But uh, he was he was super cool. But can I just tell you the best story of all? That of course. Right? Yeah, right. it's one of my favorite stories in the whole world. So we were up there. And what show and was this? It was, was at the Knitting Factory. But knitting who was it built under? Just giant, Buckethead or? It was Giant Robot. Giant Robot. Okay. So yeah, it was House and Brain and bucket and then i came out um bill came out on part of it mm -hmm. um so anyways during some part of it i think it might have been when i was out there but i didn't remember some young kid was really super wasted and he tried to walk up on the side of the stage over on the on the wing and apparently he passed out 
and he just went backwards like bam hit the oh, ground boy. so they these guys all pick him up one of them was jack black uh. jack black helped they they took this kid into the bathroom that's fucking hilarious man it's funny because so Jack like, Black used to make fun of Buckethead when he was in Guns N' Roses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, yeah, but how could he you not? He was there. Really? Like, you know, he's yeah. Yeah, friends at that point. Of but, course, of course. So he, um, they take this kid in the bathroom and they're putting water on his face and try. So um, Jack takes his shoes off and starts giving him a fucking foot massage. So this kid wakes up and looks and sees Jack Black giving him a foot massage. <laughs> like, I think that he probably thought he was on, you know, maybe he was dead. Yeah. You know, none of that made any sense to him at all. And he was really drunk. So there's a chance he wouldn't even have remembered. Wow. But yeah. Everyone was laughing about it because, you know, it's pretty that's amazing. You guys, uh, I yeah. see all your questions. I'm just going to get into, I'm going to get them all in here. I just go, I'm going with the flow with them. So all right, cool. they're going to come in. I just want to tell all the people I'm not ignoring them, but I. Right on. I have a spot for your question coming up. Um, how you doing? You, can you do a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. going. All right, great. I always check in at about an hour, make sure everyone's good. Um, I want when I asked about Guar, I wanted to segue because uh, next week on the show, I got to advertise the original co-founder of Guar, Hunter Jackson, will be here That's with us. Bad. Yeah. So that is awesome. Uh, and I just saw, did you know there's a there's a documentary about Guar that's out now? It's out today on Shudder. Go check it out. It's really great. No way. I want to yeah. see that. Do you have Shudder? Yeah, I do. Dude, watch it tonight, man, if you have time. Because, you know, if they see that they can have a hit with a weird band documentary, then yeah. I have another one for them. <laughs> that's rad, yeah. And... That's what I wanted to talk about next. Um, do you know anything about Haunted Garage? I just remember hearing about it, and I think actually, yeah, I don't think you guys I'd... ever did any shows together, unfortunately. No, Even though tapes. they would come to San Francisco and play the I Beam and stuff as well, yeah, yeah, but like never together, unfortunately. No, but I did hear about it. Well, yeah. I'm gonna, I want to run one of my trailers for the documentary. Uh, if you need oh, a cool. pee break, this will be a good time. If not, right. you know. Actually, uh, enjoy the show. All right. Well, I can uh, I can definitely run some ads in the meantime. Okay. All right. Check it out. Give me a sec. I'll be right back. Great. What Great. influence do B movies have on the band? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many tapes do you have? How many loads have you got? It started out as a band that was covering bad songs from bad movies. I mean, they should be looked at as a legacy of Los Angeles. They live the movie lifestyle. I had seen many of Dookie's movies long before I knew who he was. I first saw Dookie Flyswatter in a Green Jello video. Because as soon as I saw him up on the stage, I go, oh, fuck, that's that guy from Surf Nazis. Roger Ebert said it's the worst movie he's ever seen. They were such a part of our scene. You know, a movie, a cult movie that's got its own fans, we've attracted our own fans and our own family. Within a city of misfits like Hollywood, we were misfits. He's an icon of the underground exploitational genre. Punk rock god of Hollywood. It was neat to see the same faces always orbiting this universe that Dookie Flyswatter seemed to be in the center of. There was celebrities, weird people, cool people, interesting people. Axel and Sass came to see us and I slimed them really good. Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. Tom Waits was there. I remember Fishbone showing up at a couple of gigs. Kirk Lab was afraid of us. When you're sitting between Dookie and Elvira, it doesn't get any cooler than that. Spike Lee wasn't impressed. Just about to go on stage and Lee grabs my shoulder. White Zombie and Haunted Garage and Tool were all on the same bill. I think Soundgarden was opening for you. I would not be surprised. I did a nude painting. Clive Barker owns that painting. Los Angeles seems to be a haven for insularly popular artist situation. You can destroy here. And, no, and nobody knows where you are anywhere else. No. It's no. crazy. We'd like to be in A movies. <laughs> a B.A. movie. An A.B. movie. Oh, yeah. A B.A. movie? A B.A. movie. <laughs> <laughs>
right. Hey, Bob. Yo. Yeah. Did you guys ever come across green jelly? Yeah. We didn't play with them, but, um, man, I met this guy and he was like, he's like, you got to hear this. And um, he was telling me all about them. And so I did, I did listen to them. Yeah, they were rad, man. I don't know if you know this, but I'm member number 237 of Green Jelly. Are you serious? Yeah, well, they're over the thousands now. So I'm actually old school. Okay. Not as old school as the 90s, but yeah, it's That's it's an band, interesting band, right? Group. Yeah, the band. Yeah, okay. I thought it was like off my rocker, but okay, cool. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, he uh, he does franchise bands and stuff now. Like it's kind of like a if you show up, you're in the band situation. Whoa. So like, yeah, he's had over a thousand people in almost oh god, how long have they been around now? Forty years. Yeah, they started yeah. in the uh, 1985, I think. But I have an announcement. I don't think anyone knows about this yet, but uh, I'm planning on doing some more Green Jelly shows. Next month, they're going on tour. And uh, cool. I'm going to show up to a few of them. They're starting at the Gathering of the Juggalos. I'm not going to be there. But August 5th, 6th, and 7th, I'm planning to reunite with my puppet brothers and sisters and... Uh, and have some fun playing some jello shows. So if you're in Buffalo, New York, Akron, Ohio, or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, come see it. Come uh -huh. see me. Come see us. It's gonna be a blast. Right on, man. Yeah, man. They're still doing it. Actually, he has a, a show that he does every Saturday night on YouTube from his house. He turned into a studio every Saturday night for like two years on YouTube for free. Yeah. Uh, it's it's crazy. Another question unrelated to anything but i have to ask everyone do you have a favorite version of phantom of the opera the movie or musical that's up to you dude i hate to say it but i actually really like the the movie version of the vocals um the the andrew Lloyd weber music um musical movie yeah with what's his name yeah the 300 guy yeah 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 i don't know man i, I don't it, there was something raw about him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I trained. Really your taste about music in the sense that, um, let's say for drummers, I like drummers that make that are playing to the edge of their capabilities. Like I like it to seem like you're really struggling to get there, yet you make it right. Like in other mm. words, and the same for singers. Like, dude, there's some amazing opera singers. There's obviously a, a bunch of ridiculous Broadway singers, but they never are putting themselves in harm's way. You know what I'm saying? Like, getting themselves to that edge of where they might not. It's like, you know, a trap. Yeah, he was he was kind of there because he's more of an actor than a singer. Yeah, and so so he was struggling a little, but that gave it a certain quality. That who would that guy actually be? Who would the Phantom really be? Do you think he'd be super polished? That's a hot I mean, take. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, thought, I thought it was cool. Well, but in, I, in, the, in the original novel, he has a voice like an angel. And that's that's kind yeah, of like his yeah. uh, duality between his ugliness and his beautifulness, that's right. you know. That's right. But Well, so, I, I have a show on Fridays that I do talking about Phantom of the Opera. And Tomorrow, I'm talking to Pete Bregman, who did a graphic novel called The Trapdoor Maker, a prequel. It's very funny. It's very violent. And if you like Phantom oh, of the crap, Opera, or if you like me, tune in. It'll be a good time. That's super rad. I Nothing to... is better than the original, like, visually, though. Like the, the Lon Chaney? The one on your shirt in that shot. Oh, yeah, yeah Lon Chaney. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Lon Chaney. Dude, that was mm -hmm. so freaking scary. I remember when I was a kid... Like that was really le legitimately scary when you were little. Like it was, you know, in today's world, come on, there's there's shit tons of scary stuff. But when I was, sure. you know, forty five yeah. years ago, there wasn't. It wasn't that much, yeah. No, and he and it was still creepy. It's still creepy now. You ever see the Robert England version? No, I haven't. Oh man, you gotta check it out. It's Is crazy. It good? Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's very interesting and very late eighties. <laughs> Yeah. And very, it's the slasher version, you know? Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. it's definitely worth checking out. Um, I, yeah, I guess I, I'm coming ugh. totally from a, a visual, like a vocal side of it, maybe because that sure. was what I thought of first. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's, the, it's, it's, that's why it's an interesting question to throw out there because everyone has a different thought about it. It is. And when you were a, a, like a product of the 80s, I mean, dude, you couldn't get away from the Michael Crawford. You know, it was just yeah. Everywhere. Oh, yeah, it sure. Was, I mean, yeah. I love that too. That was my first, you know, intro to it. But there's the whole, there's a whole very strange world. And I know, um, uh, this you know, Halloween was a big influence, I'm sure, on on you guys in Buckethead. But the mask thing, uh, did that it, the Phantom of the Opera ever come up? You know, the white mask parallel. No, um, I don't know. We didn't really talk about it a lot. Yeah, and then all yeah. of a sudden, it was just. It was like boom. I'm, this is what I'm doing, and I'm like, all right, you know. Right uh, I mean, you know, we we were into all the the standard horror movies, you know. Like, mm-hmm. wasn't until uh, I know we really started watching some some you know a little darker stuff. And did you did you ever get into like the weirder B movie type ones? Well, like one of the first things we watched together was Eraserhead. Okay, well, that's that's yeah, that's a whole nother level of and weird. Then we got into you know Waters films, and so that was yeah, I mean, come on, you can't help it. Well, that I gotta ask because I know uh, Texas Chainsaw obviously was a big influence, right? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, did you guys ever sit around and watch Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers? Um, I have seen parts of it, yes, okay, because that's yes. uh, Gunnar Hansen, the original yeah, leather place. There's a movie that he did with Dookie Flyswatter. So, oh really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Dookie Flyswatter's in this. Oh shit! I never or knew that. Uh, one of the other ones he's most famous for is Blood Diner. Do you ever oh, guys yeah. watch Blood Diner? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he wrote that one. Dude, it's it, when you were walking through video stores, it was all about being sold. Yeah, like, that's what they were. They that's how they sold those movies. Yep. That's funny, man. Let's see. What do I got here? Some more old pictures. Look at that guy. Look Dude, at that blowing hair, man. So many great shots. Yeah, yeah. Tony Alves has been putting some great stuff on there. Uh, I wanted to shout out the photographer for sure. Did you know he was? Did you know him at the time, or was he just like a fan who brought a camera? We yeah we we started talking to him a couple of times. Like he would come up and show us stuff, and it was like wow. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I mean, he was. He caught a lot of good stuff. What so what's this? This looks like a, a, a bootleg. I know I've seen this show on YouTube, but uh, you have a tape of it somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got pretty good audio of it. Nice. Um, I think it got converted to disc at some point. Yeah, the there, Club. there could be a definitely a Deli Creeps archive project, you know, that I think someone had a question about. Let me see if I can find it. Um, in fact, it's really weird you asked about this because, yeah. Second, I was looking for something, and I found this today, which is, uh, it's hard to see, but it's it's from the Mystic Theater, 314.03. So this, okay. is, this is actually the board sound. Nice. Is there so, a lot of, uh, like, stuff in the Deli Creeps archive, or is most of it kind of out there already? You know, I have stuff. It's funny, because um, if, if someone were having a theoretical conversation right one right. of the topics is like getting gathering a lot of stuff like i've got a lot of mm-hmm. photos in fact it's uh i didn't even think about this but i was looking for something so i grabbed a box that i knew had some shots nice so these are all the actual original photos from, from oh them. wow yeah see i just had that one up yeah these are the real oh, wow but hey i just bought a negative scanner if you have any negatives you need me to scan Oh really? Yeah, for the documentary. Sure. Yeah, the, most of these have negatives too. That's great. Oh, it's important cool. to save this stuff, preserve it for history, you know. So here's Hook and nice. Pole Gang. Oh yeah, that was another. That was a question I was going to get to. What uh, What was the Hook and Pole Gang, and what? Well, how was it different than the Deli Creeps? We just we uh, had. Not everybody could get together. And um, and who was wanted, in that? Wanted to play some shows. Um, Renee, who's the drummer of Stockyard Skinners, gotcha. and then um, Louis Gascon was the bass player. Okay, and what then, was uh, he from? Was he in a band or? I don't know what he's done besides that. Um, but he's um. Anyways, what's that say? Any? 
Yes, I. Me too. Me too. <laughs> We're saying you put out any deli creep stuff. All I the fans that. are gonna just gobble that shit up, man. Like, yeah, been I think. For it. I think that um, you know, some stuff. We'll probably gather some things. I'm, I have a lot of theoretically. Old, theoretically. Uh, in fact, um, I just got a bunch of stuff converted to digital. That's actually a lot of stuff nobody's seen because I oh, wow. I had some video that did it, nobody else had it. So I'm gonna start releasing some of that when i can yes um, that's what yeah, i like to hear there's some crazy you know there is some good stuff oh i bet it's all pretty gold you know yeah i have a all right here's another band i wanted to ask you about what was ah. neck that was you that, and pinch right well that's no it's tony oh so is tony, it and then um gotcha yeah it was just a couple other guys that tony knew and we all got together and but the songs, for the most part, Tony and I wrote them on the side. Uh, Pickle, though, is specific. Yeah, this is the only one that you put up, so that's the only one I've heard. Okay, that song was about Pinch because oh. we were driving back from the Bay Area after a show, and um, we were in a big van, and the windows were – it was a van that you could pop out the window on the side. So anyways, I, uh, I'm laying there, and we pull over. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm laying there, and I don't really know what's going on because I don't want to get up. I'm comfortable. I had a pillow under my head. And then I hear I hear this, like, rustling of grass, and it just, what the hell's going on? So I, like, say, you got what's going on, guys? Oh, uh, Pinch has got to take a piss. Uh -huh. So, all right. I didn't think about the fact that we didn't really get off the freeway. I hadn't really registered it. So, anyways, I don't know, about five minutes later, I hear this. Literally, this is all I heard. Do you have any idea how bad that looks? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, uh -oh. what's that? And uh, someone else in the band goes, dude, there's a there's a CHP. He's talking to Pinch. I'm like, what? And I, and I get up, and the guy is like, you passed the gas station just back there. You could have got off and taken a piss there. And so that was it, man. I, I took that home. I, I had that idea in my head and I wrote the lyrics. So it's all pickle trickles down is just him pissing on the side of the road. That's where the words come from. So. <laughs> did you did you do shows as Nick or was it just a recording project or what? Uh, yeah, we, we did a couple like small places just to get out and have fun. Look, you should put that like how many uh I don't know, was there a demo tape or something? Like what is this from? Yeah, just just there is a demo. But yeah, see that's another I, thing you could that's another thing for your band camp. I know, man. I got there's one Facebook friend that every time any other release is mentioned, he's like, "When are you gonna do neck? When are you gonna put yeah. out?" You know, he wants it done like at least remastered and all that. Sure, sure. Um, which is still possible. Uh, not as high priority, perhaps. No, not at the moment. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's one I kind of pat got. You know, I don't know what when that was, but it kind of passed me by. I think I heard about it and then. Then I didn't hear about it. <laughs> yeah, Tony played all the guitar. Okay. And uh, and so it's just it's pretty cool though. I like I some of it I really like. Yeah, so I'd like, be I interested guess... in hearing it because I never heard it. Yeah, right on. So this is like kind of when the Deli Creeps kind of came back in the two thousands, right? Yeah, yeah. So what um, and that led leads to okay, yeah, that's. This TD. The Island of the Deli Creeps. Lots of people have some questions about this, so let's get into it. Okay. Tell us about Dawn of the Deli Creeps and how do you, like, I can't believe, well, first of all, I got to say, when I asked you to be on the show, it was before I knew you were going to be putting this stuff up on Spotify and everything, so I was yeah. very happy to see that. There was, yeah. like, some news coming in. Like, I, I was asking you to do this before I knew anything was happening just because you're just a, I'm a big fan, but... Yeah. Now, this is back in the world, um, and it's crazy to me to think that this was almost 20 years ago or something like that now, because yes, I still consider this the new Daily Creeps album. Right. Um, how do you feel right? about it now? Like, it's almost a, a legacy already. Yeah, and it's um, it's funny because we, we kind of ran out of room on the disc, and we had a couple other songs that were oh, ready really? that would have also gone on it. Originally, we were going to call it um, Feast of Freaks, but then not mm. put Feast of Freaks on it. We thought that would be funny. 
No, and that, would, would, that would really piss me off. Yeah, well, and so and that's what's funny I, about it, right? I know for sure that if there were theoretically another release that that right. it probably will be called Dawn of the Deli or Feast of Freaks, and it will have Feast of Freaks on. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So that's that's a given. So what was the decision process like for choosing songs for this album? Because some you of them know, were new and some of them were old. Yeah, and we, uh, you know, Dan Dan Monty was was right. pretty much. So we recorded most of it at Travis Dickerson's studio, and then we did and some then, pickups, like the the voice things that I do, the the sort of little. little I'll play this in the background because I wanted to ask. This came out. I'm pretty sure at least a year or two before the album, and it was like almost like a demo version. It was before you detuned the guitars and everything. Yeah. Um, so this this album seems because I was really excited about this, uh, yeah. and then I heard the final product. I was like, "Whoa, this is a little bit different." Like, how it did was. it change throughout? Like this this seems already perfect to me. Yeah. Um, so there are uh, there are people instrumental in the um, process of recording the album that also feel like they would like to hear the regular version right so i it's possible that there's going to be a re-release of that album with the regular tuning so you did actually recorded it all normal first and then converted no, it later? i think that some of that would have to be redone okay okay yeah okay. but there are there are some of the tracks have it because i originally but, thought this was a totally different recording that just got scrapped but then i compared the two and i'm like no the vocals are the same the drums not. sound i recorded all the vocals twice i mean like, oh okay there was gotcha. a period of time where i knew those songs like dude they were my socks man you know oh, so yeah i could recreate a lot of the vocals um in yeah, fact tra easy. travis kind of had a he would always sort of admire the, the way that I could double something like because mm -hmm. I, I had I'd sang them so many times. I mean, you got you know how long oh, yeah. some of these songs we played for years. Before yeah, I mean, this. even by the time this album this was recorded, I mean, this song was 20, almost 20 years old, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was easy, but because I loved it, like, oh, my God, I was so excited. And then there was nothing for like two years. And then finally the album came out. Right. So if you think shadows we aren't the world or whatever stealing tomorrow's whatever we called it there's a couple other songs that people don't know then there's there's you know um feast of freaks there's i'm gonna get some Pink wagon there, there you know there's a lot there's already a lot of songs without there is you gotta without us writing have a deep anything. catalog you need more than one album for sure yeah well definitely <laughs> the next one for yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we'll see and uh i had another question about that i mean i think you just answered it but i figured i'll show it would you ever consider a vinyl or cassette release of that record oh yeah yeah um vinyl is definitely a a likely thing so i'd love to see that for sure um we might have to hit up Patton's company and yeah ipecac yeah i yeah uh I might have a connect for you there if uh, if you don't already. That's cool. No, I would. Uh, yeah. All right. Would... Well, I'll we can talk off air about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever heard of the radioactive chicken heads? No. <laughs> because I like to think uh, that they so uh, they are like Buckethead's children from his coop. That's super rad. Yeah, I was That's... actually uh, theoretically I was. Uh, a chicken head at one point nice and uh everyone who's interested you can watch a past episode a couple of weeks ago i had carrot top from the chicken heads but i i forgot to ask him about Buckethead. but i wanted to hear if you guys you know they're chickens no, and chicken rad. you know bucket head you know i think it goes together in my mind yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's the next thing i want to talk about and i have a prop too so this goes full circle to the first thing I said here. My intro into this whole world was Praxis. Yeah. And how yeah. Uh, amazing was it when I found out that there was suddenly a new Praxis record and Maximum Bob was on it and, and Mike Patton was on it. Yep. Did you um, 
record this in New York with Bill Laswell, or what's the no. story with this? No, we recorded in L.A. And I have my vinyl here. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, uh, I think it's um, yeah, Man. it's signed by Bill too. Nice. Have you ever seen this? No, I haven't. Your name's on there somewhere. It's super oh, look rad, at it. Man. Maximum Bob. There you go. Biggie Pop. I know. Bernie Worrell, Serge, Mike Patton. Like, what a lineup. Of course, Bill, Buckethead, Brain. You know, yeah. Ram LZ, R.I.P. Oh, no, man. I got to yeah, see that... uh, Ram LZ uh, play with Buckethead once, too. That was That's like, awesome. it was unannounced, and he just showed up and, you know, if you're there, he throws you on stage and he's got his crazy costumes on and everything. Man. It was cool. Yeah. I saw some amazing pictures that they they took in New York and it was like, this guy's so rad. Yeah. And I mean, I, he was in that uh, the animal behavior video and everything yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's been around that scene for a while. I freaking love that song, by the way. Damn. Right. So tell me about worship. Uh, it just... I do things a lot on the fly. And so I was in the studio. I knew the parts that I was going to sing uh, musically. And so I was standing there and as I'm, I came up kind of with a melodic idea and then I just scratched down the lyrics right then and there. And I'm always thinking. I so knew what, um, I, that's you and Ram LZ, right? So who came first on the track? Uh, or am I wrong? Let's see. I think it's Hawk, Hawkman. It's Hawk Hawkman. Man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hawkman did his part after. Okay. So, and I basically, they knew, uh, I think Bill had said he had something for the verse. And um, could we w focus on the a chorus? And then um, I asked, you know, well, what is the song about? Like, what's, what's the idea of it? And once I heard what it, the idea was, I just, thought of those words like yeah it's perfect you know. yeah and i love I it know. it's a great it's a great record yeah it's it is it's it's pretty trippy man did you know bill back in the 90s or no i mean i knew of him because and... like he was always here in new york yeah yeah no he's heavy duty though yeah yeah i i met him once briefly uh he was hanging out at the bar at a buckethead show nice yes yeah, so i got my picture with him and everything yeah i remember after bucket went out and worked with him and he came back and he was just like like this guy for so the first Paraxis record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he 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 was pretty blown away by how just his presence and he's so heavy duty, you know. Yeah. Plus, I mean, obviously he's a great player. Oh yeah. And speaking of, that's a good time to segue into this. Nice. So Buckethead's playing a sh couple shows in New York with Paraxis. There's Bill Brain and Bucket back uh, at it, and I've yeah. I've seen I've seen Bucket with Brain play uh with the um, Les Claypool the Colonel Claypool yeah. thing yeah I've never seen Bill play I am uh, fucking stoked Maximum Bob you should come out to New York and hang man, out at the Praxis I've, show I would love to see that show seriously big time Dude. I don't know we'll see yeah we'll see. we'll see where the um theoretical conversations right go so well, I'm, and, uh, I'm super that, stoked about that because I'm not not only, of course, Bucket hasn't played since the pandemic, but usually, like the last I don't know, ten years of seeing Buckethead, he's just him and his iPad, you know, yeah. iPod. Which and I miss, you know, as much as I love anything that he does, it's magical. But with a band, it's just a whole different energy, especially with Brain, who's been playing with them on and off for God, what, almost <laughs> thirty oh, something yeah. years now. Yeah, that alone is worth scene and they have they have really good chemistry oh yeah you know? yeah it's, i'm really it's bummed i never got to see them together with guns and roses oh my dude brain brain was a mind blower you know like yeah i don't know being being up close and personal i mean one one show we did at the Ten Thousand lakes festival it was kind of yeah, like right uh, seen that two on sections, right it was it was our set and then and then more of a bucket solo set with yeah. brain not solo but just his own stuff and anyway, so I kind of got to stand off to the side and like watch it. And, you know, I mean, I've been around them a million times, like live, but. But he, he, this is the only time he actually played Deli Creep stuff, right? Huh? That was the only time he ever played Deli Creep songs, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is um, awesome. It, um, I don't know. It was just, he, he's, he's got a gear, dude, that he can hit that's like, wow, wow. Yeah. But, 
Yeah, because I know him. I know the two of them, and um, and um, Dan did a couple shows, but only on the West Coast, yeah. so I missed that. Yeah, and I if um, people who who would have to make plans for uh, you know, for travel, um, like if I were you, and you wanted to be in um, Orange County on Halloween. Make some plans. It wouldn't, gotcha. be, it wouldn't be the worst idea. Hmm. So, Halloween's a yeah. I don't so know if I'm going to make that, but Halloween's shit. a lot of fun. So, gotcha. I love you know the candy in Orange County is really good. Uh huh. Really, uh huh. I found bad. this old flyer of you guys with the limbo maniacs. So, is that the first time you met Brain? You think? Uh, I don't know. No, we we actually went and saw them. Like he, because everybody knew each other, right? So because right. Christian, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So we were already going to see them play, and dude, they were amazing. They were so freaking good live, and actually, I, I really liked Fungo Mungo too. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I never yeah. heard of these other bands. Yeah, the, they were good. They're good guys. Like you know that the Bay Area was was kind of the epicenter at that moment. You know, I mean, you had look what you had up there it was insane. You know, mm -hmm. um, so. And then obviously Primus, it was right. It was special. It was a it was a good time. Uh, uh here's going back to Dawn of the Delicates. Creeps. Were Hatchet and Beauty of Life completely improvised? Yeah, one hundred percent, just on the fly. And that was actually done about from where I'm sitting right here, about four hundred yards away. Oh wow! Uh, I'm in a place where there was a rehearsal. Or let's. It was buckets. One of his places Bots. and um, one of his coops yeah and so it's yeah. just me and him and dan mm -hmm. and um, dan just recorded and i just i did whatever came to my brain so have you uh talked to travis at all like, recently not not since before covid yeah yeah because he, he doesn't he got rid of his studio didn't he he kind of retired no, he, he built one at home which oh okay looks, looks amazing i actually would really like to do stuff there and i wouldn't know yeah. I wouldn't say it would be shocking if that was involved somehow in mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anything potentially. So, okay. So I want to play some really old. So this is a, a clip from one of those young Buckethead DVDs. I'm sure you're okay. very aware of. So uh, I want to hear what Bucket has to say about you and the Daily Creeps. Tell me about this guy you're in a band with named Barnum. Is he fact <laughs> or fiction? Fact? Fat? You said he's fat? No, fat. Fat. <laughs> like big, rotund. Yeah. <laughs> What's the tastiest part of the human body? <laughs> Wait, I got another one. That's so hilarious. Now, what's the deli creep's favorite favorite meal before a gig? Legally or illegally? Illegally, of course. <laughs> okay. Um we like the hip area. <laughs> My personal favorite is the back hip area. If they're muscular, it's, it's real good. The buttocks? Yes. Do you eat it raw or do you, do you have a special uh, preparation? <laughs> um, he looks around like he's being... It doesn't matter. Raw. Raw. Yeah? Yeah. What about Barnum? What's he after? Uh, he's wearing a Ted Zeppelin shirt. I can't shirt. speak for him. <laughs> um, Oh he yeah, they used to play with Haunted Garage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys hope to accomplish? Worldwide success, fame, fortune. Yeah. So we can build. Um, we want to make. Um, we want to make a thing called Hack Brothers Corporation. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Is that the, the acoustic guitar you were talking about? <laughs> That's Hack Brothers Corporation. And what it is is we will make videos, movies, amusement parks, uh -huh. foods, Delis, we're gonna open up our own delis. Everything, total propaganda. A lot of, a lot of intake and 
And uh, that way we can, uh, you know, rule the world. So how, those uh, were the Deli Creeps plans? Was that uh, any truth, any of that? <laughs> oh, man. Hack Brothers Corporation, I'd still love to see it. Yeah, That's exactly that. what I was thinking, like, the original, when I was into the Deli Creeps, I was like, this is a perfect music video band. Like, there could be a movie. That Like, that's, I always thought that about the Deli Creeps. Was that, yeah. like, a plan that you had? Uh, well, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff. And, um, and honestly, uh, I don't know, man. We always felt like we do whatever we want, you know? There was no, no limits on anything, so. Sure. But, like, did you ever plan, like... How far did a planning stage go for like a, a movie or a music? You know, obviously there was like the binge clips and stuff, but yeah, I, I think movie definitely was something we were always really honestly thinking about. You know, doing yeah, because I've always thought it would be like you guys are like the Texas Chainsaw of rock and roll, and that would make a great movie. <laughs> yeah, and where I lived, actually, both of us, both of our houses were had had different aspects that were pretty creepy in some parts um he had this crazy back house that i think you've seen it in the video where we're playing basketball and um, uh -huh, uh -huh. there was definitely definitely a ghost for sure i mean i'm not like huh. like whatever you believe i'm telling you man it was crazy i used to be asleep and you know that feeling where you're trapped and i would have i would see this figure sitting on me Wow. And like that happened more than once. And I'm, you know, I've never like, I don't see that all, all the other places I go. It was, it was pretty amazing. And then my place was just right out of chainsaw. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it was gnarly. It's a hundred, it was like a 105 year old house and it was, Whoa. it was just, it was creepy. That's where the picture of the four of us are out in the trees. That's in the backyard. And, whose uh, house, uh, whose house is this? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? That's Bucket's yeah. bedroom. So this is a. Did you really send tapes to David Letterman? Yeah. Yeah, we did. You ever hear back? I can't. I think so. Did you Did you send these tapes to like everybody? Did you do this like a hundred times? No, it was just for them. <laughs> I think I was sunburned. I had been working outside. Yeah, it looks like it. It's hilarious. There he is. What do you remember about this time? Wow. Like this, you guys you were just hungry, huh? Oh yeah, dude. We were, well, we had, <laughs> we had time, you know, and it was like, we could just do whatever we wanted and uh, go off. And uh, it was a lot of fun, man. His, his parents were so good. Um, in a lot of ways, I spent some time at his house that, that I needed in my life in ways that mm -hmm. we were together kept me out of a lot of other trouble, you know, and doing other things. And so it was just good. Gotcha. It was really good. And you know, it's funny when you see that other video of him talking about the, the hack and all that the yeah. plans, you know, not everybody knows him. You don't know, like that guy's sense of humor is amazing. Like, and the, so the two of us are both, I mean, I'm not going to say that about myself, but I'll say it about pretty, you. Pretty good. You're funny, people. Bob. You're funny. No, but you know, and then when we're together, it's just, it, it's like, it just becomes this explosion. I saw him do something. We were actually with, um, we were with brain and, and the limo maniacs after a show, we were in Berkeley and, uh, eating at this place, uh, like right along right on the street and it was a really busy street it was like a row of restaurants i can't remember the street because i was I wasn't. Mm. but anyways he put on this this um mask that later on was so sim it's similar to the one that um slipknot or later on the one with the with the yeah 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 so this is way back then though right and um not not that i need to establish credit for him but anyways yeah you guys predated them by about 10 years in the pop culture yeah well so he puts this mask on and just jumps over the the banister, leaves our table, where there's like six or eight of us, and he runs out into the street and stops traffic, and he starts doing this crazy, weird, like like he was a like a chimpanzee almost. Uh -huh, and he's like uh -huh. reaching into the ground, and then he would put his hands up, so he's got the mask on, and like towards the cars, and he was doing this like, like you know, and 
we're all dying laughing. All the other people at the restaurants are like, what the hell? And all the people in the car are just like, cars are like. He still does stuff like that. He put out some clips of him uh, running around New York and um, oh, Michael man. Myers thing. And, you yeah, know, I nobody knew it was him because it was Halloween and he was just doing his thing. Dude, I was laughing so hard. It was like, and I, and at that moment, it was like, I really got it. And, and you know, um, Trey used to say this. Trey would say like, From you, guys are the, you guys are like together. One of you has this and the other has this, you know, and I really got that. Like he had the physical gifts and talent in that way. Besides the guitar playing, you know, and then I was this yeah. other thing. And, you know, it was like, it, not, it was, it wasn't, we didn't think about it. We just were who we were, you know, like. Yeah. And, no, it worked perfectly together. Yeah, and but, all the other people up there were super, super creative and talented too. Yeah. You know, so. Does, does Pinch still play, theoretically? Um, As far as I know. As far there as I've go. heard recently, yes. So let's uh, let's take this into more modern days. This is uh, kind of what got you back into music, right here. Yeah, Myrtle. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was like pre between the Deli Creeps and Stockyard Skinner somewhere, right? Yeah. Well, actually, was I this with this, uh, Travis? I wrote this when I was in Neck. The song. Okay. Um, I was driving down to Tony's house, and I pulled over my truck on the side of the road, and I wrote the whole thing because I I had all the words in my head. I was just and I'd already had this melody and I was singing it to myself and it's like a 30 minute drive. So I could, I just had to pull over. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I already had that Myrtle was a cow that Tony actually had. Oh, wow. And, um, and then, you know, they raised it to slaughter. And so there was this, you know, sort he's of the real deli creep of you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I love it. In fact, I would, I hope that cause if there's theoretical discussions of, what kind of songs would would we want to cover? Mm. Um, and actually, mm. I think that this is a great, uh, you know, you could put this out there or on. A, on We're the, live right now. Yeah, is I'd love to hear other people's feedback on what song they would like to see a theoretical um, reunion cover. A, a cover song. All yeah. right, guys in the comments. Yeah. And what it, songs should the Deli Creeps cover? Yeah, because I think it's kind of fun, and I never used to think about it, but now... Yeah, like, have you guys oh, ever done covers? I mean, The Haunted Mansion and really. stuff like that, but yeah, I never thought so no. either. No, we don't we have enough time the Star Wars and stuff, you know. It. Yeah. Well, put it, putting it out there to the comments. Right on. Uh, what do we got here? And then you started the Skinners. When did this start? Well, gosh, I guess it's like four years. It I almost seems longer. Yeah, I know. It's weird how time flies. I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I can't put my. Well, you know about time. It's the enemy, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's another song that I just. But man, I know you've talked about this before, but um, the way that uh, you would have just these beautiful songs in between these maniacal ones. It was just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. this is a radio hit. And then you do like, can I have a ride? You know, right. That was what we liked. We liked it, you know, like um it's a mind fuck, but it like they're all great in their own way, like time. Oh my god, that should be a radio fucking hit. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then on top of that, having a song like Pink Wagon, which I think Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live the experience of seeing people slowly get start to understand what you're singing about. Right. Because That's... at first it's like, oh, this is a nice song. And yeah. then I, I just remember watching. It's subversive, it. yeah, because it's so sweet. But you're like, did he just say that? Yeah, and we we had this other thing. It, I wouldn't call it a song. It was more like a call and return that Bucket would play. It wasn't, um, I'm going to get some. It was another thing. It was called Ways of Killing. And mm -hmm. this was when mm -hmm. I think, like, technically speaking, we were at our our, like, our highest level of, we were very well tuned on stage and I was starting to sing better than I ever had. And so anyways, I think I have that. Here. We had this concept that he played, he played a part on guitar and I would try to visualize what that was as a way of killing someone. Oh, so ways then, of killing. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so this there it is. Yeah. And so I would just do this, this vo verbal on, you know, onslaught. And the thing is, is we had people that came to all of our shows. And I remember, and we were in some bigger venues at this point, 
And I remember this it was one like the show. 96 shows. Yeah. And yeah. Well, yeah, it would have been around then. And we did uh-huh. Ways of Killing. And I remember this one guy who was always at all of our shows. And I think that was the first time that that I I lost. Like, like I was saying things that were so not okay that he literally, I remember seeing his face like go like, oh, and he backed up. Like he, like he literally physically was. Re- you re- finally off. got him. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, and that must be were, rewarding as a performer, right? Yeah. You don't, you know, our whole thing, dude, let me tell you what backstage was like. Okay. There, I mean, especially later on, there would be a lot of women showing up or trying to come backstage. Mm. We were the, we were the antithesis of that. We didn't want, you know, we were not. Guns and Roses with the maze right. of naked yeah, women. Yeah, Jesus, bro. We were. I'm like, sure you heard some stories about that, oh, right? Yeah, I'm yeah like, that's, that, that's a whole other podcast. The most repellent that I possibly can be, and um, you know what? Like, because it it just was fun. It was like everyone wants you to be what they want you to be. That's not that ain't it, you know. And and I'll be like completely honest about who I know Buckethead to be. And again, this is theoretically, right? Um, yeah, quote unquote. He's so freaking down to earth and he's so like not, he's not at all, like, trust me. Yeah. Not at all like caught up in anything about himself, about being anything. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's and, kind of, I imagine that's why it all started the an- anonymity and such. Like, because that's just not what he wants. He doesn't. Yeah doesn't care if you see his face and that you give him adoration for for what he you know what i mean like it's just he just wants to create this stuff and, and give it out i and, totally respect how committed he has been throughout all these years especially with social media and all that hey is the deli theoretically would the deli creeps you think have a social media presence probably only because of me mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. um uh, I know Brain was trying to get him to, to get on there and, you know. Yeah. I, I He's got his ways and he's pretty solid I'll, with them. I will say this. Um, I'm shocked at, uh, theoretically, at mm-hmm. how unaware he is of any of his social media presence. Or oh, wow. Yeah, his, see, maybe he needs print. someone to, like, do. He doesn't know anything. Dude, uh, you know. Buckethead would kill on TikTok. He doesn't know anything, and he with those dances and stuff, he could like start TikTok trends. Yeah, and you know what? Um, the conversation I would have with him is one where I said, "Don't change anything that that you're doing. The way you're doing it, don't change anything." Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it works. It works for him. Right. He's got his website. He just updates randomly. Nobody knows about it unless you check it out. And, and it's he's, not, man. he's not um here today, gone tomorrow, you know, because it, because I honestly believe this. When you sell yourself to the moment, you really do. You sell yourself into how do I get the most out of this and how do I maximize this, blah, blah, blah. Then you become that moment. Yeah. He's become like transcendent of the yeah. moments. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't live in the past with what he creates either, which is really crazy. Oh, yeah. I I have a I always had a question of, uh, well, you know, I, even as a big fan, like I am not caught up on the pikes, man. Like Jesus Christ, there's so many of them. I love that. It's like a lifetime of music that I can discover still, but like, I wonder if he ever listens back to any of them. Like, it seems like he creates it, it's out there. And then there's 10 more the next week. I highly doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. yeah, that's totally exactly. My, my brother actually met him back in the 90s. <laughs> that's nice. And hey, uh, he, he... Who wouldn't? You know, he I have uh, an autograph he gave me um, back in that day, that day yeah, as yeah. well. And um, it's, it's cool, man. Like Right, he could speak in emojis. <laughs> Maybe. Keep yeah, I got your song requests. Uh, keep them coming. I'll, I'll play them in a little bit. I mean, I'll, I'll yeah, we got some uh, songs that people want to hear covered, but I want more of them. Give me some more so I can uh, do them all at once. <laughs> um, and then the Skinners, like here's a couple of your releases. Is, is there gonna be a, a Skinners like a? I'm I'm waiting for the CD or a vinyl. You know, it's all digital so far. 
I know. Yeah, we'll, num, num, we'll sli- get something out. But definitely go to the band camp. Oh, That's let me put the song, banner man. back up. Spongiform is a good song. Have you ever noticed in that picture, those are cow legs, right? Like, that's literally, they're burning cows that have spongiform. Oh, my God. Those are literally piles of bodies. Where did you get that picture? Did you take it? Uh, no, um, it was provided by uh, Eric Isaacson, who did a lot of legwork. He's, you'll see him on, on uh, Facebook. and um, he's, I actually visited him in Boston this year, which was I think- awesome. This is my he favorite. Did, this. this is he my favorite this. of the Stockyard songs. Oh yeah, I, I do. I like that song a lot. You know what? I think it's time. Let's play a clip of Tommy's Never Coming Home. How about that? Right on. Because this, you guys gotta hear. You guys love the Deli Creeps. You gotta hear the new shit too. You got a knack for finding some great guitar players, dude. Oh, Ryan is where did, awesome, Yeah, where man. did you find that kid? I mean, that guy can do all those old bucket solos and everything. Dude, he's... And he's like really, young as fuck, right? He's really good, man. You know, what's funny is he sent a message to me on one of the social media accounts when he was 15. Yeah. Asking if I wanted to do stuff. And then later on, when Renee was looking for guitar players, and um, he, he... I don't know how they hooked up, but... We got together and met at a pizza place, which um, is always one of the first things that seems to happen. Like we, mm-hmm. even with Bucket, we used to always go, you know, pizza was the middle of our life. But so, yeah, I'm like, dude, I could have hooked up with you three years ago. And cause he was, he is, he's, he's a, I, yeah. I think it's not he's. just the player part of, you know, having been blessed to play with Bucket and then Ryan is, is that it's their song ideas and like how, yeah, because that was a riff that he brought in, right, Tommy? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's like, I love it. It's great. It's one of the things I've always sort of lamented about Bucket's career in that um I wish I didn't care if it was me with me or whatever band, but like I wish he'd done more projects with singers because he's so good yeah. at writing yeah, songs. Yeah. I agree, or, I agree. Or vocals. You know, and, and they're never nor- normal. I mean, other than shadows is pretty normal, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like I hope to get an opportunity to, to. I mean, that's that's kind of what Serge was going for with this, that. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I love it. It's just, I don't know. Good, good and idea. like, oh my, Ryan. let's and going back to this, of course, too. Like, Boot, Bootsy singing and everything. Did you oh, ever, you mean, ever hang out with Bootsy? Only once. Yeah. yeah, but it was a it was actually a show, and it was pretty damn cool. That's great. Um digital underground played oh wow yeah it was pretty rad the so, humpty hump yeah oh yeah wow. was, um, I was like right was there tupac on the stage there? huh wasn't tupac part of that uh not yeah but not when i saw him okay like, he, maybe it was after that yeah but i um, think that's where he started yeah yeah here i got a random one for you i want to know about this and i have a prop too but let me get the clip up Oh, there's no, there's no image, but, um, I forget which one it's on, but it's on one of these grab bag tapes. Damn, man. You remember this? What's going on with this? Forgot about it. Fun and games. Was this just a jam that, like, how yeah. did this happen? It's a scoop and a shovel in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I forgot about that. Somebody have that on um, digital so I can hear it? Yeah, I got it for you. It's on YouTube. 
Is it? Yeah, yeah. What is it listed under? Um, I forget which one it's on, but it's on one of these grab bag tapes that he used to sell. And you know, I probably this, haven't heard that. Look at this. This one's hand drawn, and uh, it says 1995. Oh yeah, that's Pinch's writing, by the way. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. I know it. Oh yeah, and here's another thing. This is um. This is a reissue, but I got it recently. And what can you tell me about the Shrimper compilation? Do you oh, remember this? Yeah. You yeah, got a live I'll... version of Time on here. Is there really? Yeah, and it, I mean, I guess it's from the '80s or early '90s, but um. Yeah, I think. But this is a reissue cassette of it. Up in the Bay Area, that was putting them out. I think. Yeah, I don't know any of the other bands on this, but um. Apparently it was only sold for a dollar back then. Oh yeah! Wow, a buck. I What's know, right? That, what does it have? A live which one? Time. Oh, all right. I don't know what show it's from, but um, I don't That's even think good. it's the full thing. I think it's just a clip of it for some reason. So, uh, you you were on this a little bit too, right? No, 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 you weren't on this. But there was a say a song named OGs, oh, and that's something you used to say, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think you know he's trying to like, like a little shout out, you know. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, but you were on this one, right? Um, yeah. You did it some uh, some fun and games and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. This I I think this is one of my favorite bucket releases. Oh, it what is. You, killer. I don't even know if you're credited in here, but your voice is definitely in there. That's funny. What do you what do you remember about this? This was um around the same time as the creeps coming back, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think I just recorded stuff at his plate at his. Um, yeah, sounded pretty, you know. <laughs> I don't know, bootleg it. What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Man, I forgot about that. Um, time is amazing. <laughs> Let's see. I got some songs. We got some songs for you. Let's see. Who would love another collab with Serge or Gigi? Oh man, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Ooh, yeah. What do you think about that one? Yeah. You know Melissa? Oh yeah. Yeah. That fucking is on. Remember the times. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna go in reverse order of that. I got these requests because I think I think my brother nailed it in the first one. So I'll end with that. Okay. But um. Here's some House of the Rising Sun, Dude. Cat Scratch Fever, Stink Fest by Tool. House of the Rising Sun would be awesome. There you go. That's a good idea. We got Psycho Killer. Oh. And Psychotherapy. Maybe you can mix those together. Damn, that'd be a cool match. Right? Yeah. I love Psychotherapy. That's a great song. It is. Don't Fear the Reaper. Did you ever see the Ramones? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh man, never had the chance. I don't know, like, I remember them being a oh man, Allison Chains. That's like my name is Mud. That that would be pretty tough, man. I mean, he's already played with Les. I'm sure they played that together, dude. We were playing at the I Beam, and Allison and Chain Allison Chains was playing across the street. Whoa, the what, what venue was uh, across the street? It was some little dive. I can't remember what they what a place did you ever it was about the same size. It wasn't much difference. Did you ever but... play the Chatterbox? chatterbox no that was in san francisco i don't think so something pantera cowboys from yeah now. that'd be awesome all right so this is the winner for me i think this is perfect okay damn that's pretty that's pretty smart yeah yeah i mean rad. it's thematic it's alice cooper it's yeah. got a mask in it it's a classic uh you know it's about a man and you know it's a, from the jason movie yeah. Well, okay. I want to. I'm gonna. You gotta like text me that so I don't forget. That's oh yeah. Well, idea. you know what? This lives on. Uh, oh, that's right. YouTube, I can watch it. So you can Sorry, watch it back. There for a minute. Yeah. Um, the uh, theoretically speaking, there is one. There's one that is in the wheelhouse, and so. Uh, cool. And I'm not gonna give it away because. Yeah, yeah. But those are some cool ideas. Lunch, and it, no one in a million years would think of it. So. John Merrick, Elephant Man, Bones Explosion. That's a nice. fucking headland ride, isn't it? That's so rad, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> hey, Mel, my killer podcast in the house. All right. Um, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Is this does this still exist? And and what would I hear if I texted this, or what would I get if I texted this? I don't even know if it's still there. Did I'll anyone ever it. text it? I can tell you if it comes to me. All right, I'll try it after this. We'll see what happens. Right on. Uh, what else do I got? Oh, this is more recent. You, I see you met well, a member of your family here. Yeah, yeah. He he was making hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> it was nice. And uh, let's see. What can you tell me about this Maximum Bobcast? Well, I'm getting my act together. Um, learning from you right now, man. Yeah, yeah, dude. You're I think this a is a great spin. format. StreamYard. I, I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to get the ball rolling and set up something. Yeah, I think it's good. You know, a lot most podcasts are just audio, but yeah, I think the see, you know, talking to someone and actually seeing them is like a whole different. It's it's yeah, way better yeah. that way. Well, and the other thing is that um, in studio, I promised to have some creative people that people would be pretty excited about seeing create together. So a lot of um, improving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of and maybe just parts of new things when uh when can we possibly expect that um i'm hoping late august okay awesome but something to look forward to September. so because a lot a lot more um <laughs> anyway <laughs> i i gotta watch it <laughs> yeah yeah sure I have a very, oh, uh, I think we're, we're about to land this plane, but I, uh, all right. I saw this video and I just wanted to know where this was because it looks so cool. Uh, so that's outside of a place called the dog gallery and it used to be there. Now it, it's located elsewhere, but okay. it's a, it's an art gallery in Pomona. You're not far from here. This just looks so fun. Oh, it was awesome. Do you have a favorite Deli Creep song? That's tough, man. I, I'm i here asking the tough questions. Can I have a ride? It's weird because live, it, it's usually the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I'm not always where I am going yet emotionally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, you, that, you end with it now, hard. right? It does. It hits hard, and but I've I've probably my most crazed performances have, have come with um, Feast of Freaks. There was one time I crawled underneath the stage riser and, and cried, like <laughs> I wasn't really crying, but I sold it pretty good. Oh well, yeah, you guys from, really milked that song. <laughs> yeah, I went from laughing to crying, and you know, I just used to. It was heavy, man. It was heavy. It got yeah. That's heavy. definitely. I mean, that's a great song, but especially live. Like, you got to see that one live. I'm sure. Yeah, you really get the, the way, full experience. The life of a song evolves over time of playing live a bunch of times. Like where songs would be later, as opposed to where they were in the beginning. Yeah, that was always the best part. It was like this is where we're at with this now. Like there would be way more rhythmic like syncopation and things that I didn't used to do, and now. You know, because I like to get off on it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, there's two things I always want to do. I want to get off, but I and I want to make first and foremost is just make my band members laugh, right? And, yeah, yeah, you sure. Know, I see videos now, or you know, I have looked at stuff with my son, and or he'll he'll, he'll ask me about something, and, uh -huh. and when I really, you know, because look, realistically, most cameras were like. 50% on bucket, 30% on me, and then whatever's left. Yeah, move around. Yeah. But sometimes when the camera would be on pinch and you would like, I see somewhere it was out of focus and then they focus in on him and you realize like, dude, he, the things he was doing. Oh, he was so funny. He was and he'd amazing. get up and like start running around in the middle of a song. Oh my and God. Oh and he, man. And his face, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's great. He's like a cartoon character from hell. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, he was definitely part of the mix. I mean, the bass players kind of came and gone. They, but you three were like definitely characters. Oh yeah, and all yeah, it all worked perfectly together. 
Yeah, Speaking of getting out. off, what do what what's going on here, man? <laughs> Here's some binge clips, I believe. Yeah. That was in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a ride? Yeah. I think my favorite shadows. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, that's just such a good song. I would really like to see shadows had we had we played it all the years so that it got more mm -hmm. more you know and formed yeah yeah because yeah, that's a real early one i could totally see doing it um well live again so yeah <laughs> just out to lunch this is, this just looks like a lot of fun it is and like you'd be laughing right so yeah it, it's just hard to this always makes me laugh we just try to keep it all together is there anything that i missed that uh that we should nah, talk man, about it's all good yeah i think we covered pretty much everything right on dude thanks so much for coming on yeah you're welcome thank you i'm uh i'm so excited for theoretical futures man if you come to new york if you get some uh some praxis hit me up i'll be there both nights all right all right i will Sweet. Thank you. How I'll do let I... you know if anything else adds that direction. If theoretically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, right um, I, I can definitely uh, announce it here on the show. Okay. Let's um, let's play us out with some. Uh, can I have a ride? I think I don't think I played this one yet. So, uh, where is it? Can I have a ride? Would you say this is kind of like the classic? Kind of like if you are introducing someone to the Deli Creeps, I wouldn't start with Shadows. I would probably start with "Can I Have a Ride." Yeah, yeah. I love Boom Chica. Boom Chica's great too. Yeah. This is. That's a that's a different mask right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, Josh, I'll be there. My brother likes found body. Uh, that was pretty improv, by the way. All right, Bob. Thanks so much. All right, man. I Thank will you talk too. to you later. All right, I appreciate it. I'm going to close it out with some ads. Okay. And I'll see you guys next week. Come back. We're going to have Techno Destructo from Guar. Peace, man. See you later, man. Okay. And let's play this one.